I thank the Honourable Guest for his speech and now look to Professor Barbara Evans to continue the case for the Opposition. Hear, hear. Mr President, I'm so pleased to be here and thank you for inviting me. I'd like to be very clear what this motion is. The motion is that the manipulation of human DNA is an ethical necessity. My role is to oppose this motion. Ethical necessities are things that everybody ought to do, things that offer such compelling benefits that the world would be a better place if we all did them. Being nice to babies is an ethical necessity. Uh, Mother Teresa and Albert Schweitzer should be nice to babies, and so should terrorists. Here's the problem. If you make human gene manipulation an ethical necessity, then you're stuck with the conclusion that Mother Teresa and bioterrorists both should do it. I don't want either of them doing it. <laughs> Mother Teresa was very well regarded, but not for her scientific prowess. And terrorists, is there anybody in this house that wants them to go anywhere near this? The same know-how that can prevent cancer can cause it, and how would we ever know? And CRISPR-Cas9 technology is surprisingly user-friendly. It doesn't take a particularly sophisticated laboratory. The University of Mosul in Iraq has some pretty good labs. Whose territory is that in these days? Before we decree ethical necessities, we need to be clear, for whom is it a necessity? Under what conditions and for what purpose? And we need to be very clear what we're talking about. Are we talking about manipulating DNA in silico as a computer simulation? Are we going to do it in cell lines? Are we going to do somatic editing of adult sick people who can consent to the risk? Or are we going to do manipulation of embryos to design better babies? And I have to concede that I am open to the idea that babies may need redesigning. I spent 10 hours on a plane last night with a collection of <laughs> Americas. <laughs> with America's most notorious bad babies. Yet I hesitate to say it's a moral necessity to edit babies when it's the parents that should be prosecuted. <laughs> the motion is just too broad, and it fails for lack of specificity. As the comic book superheroes always say, my work here is done. That's the end of this debate. It's too broad. But before I get back on my horse and ride back to Texas, I want the rest of my 10 minutes of fame. So I'm going to keep talking. One thing I'd like to take time to do is to honor those of you who feel there may be an ethical necessity not to manipulate the human genome. I don't necessarily agree with you, but I honor your views and think they're valid. You may think it's playing gods. You may think the risks are too high. You may feel like it disparages genetically disabled people to take the position that they need to be cured and stricken from the roster of future generations. If I don't dwell on your concerns, it's only because if you feel this way, I think you're on the side of opposing this motion. What's less obvious but also true is that people like me who strongly support human gene manipulation also should oppose this motion. We can love ice cream and think it advances the interests of mankind without decreeing a moral necessity for everybody to eat it. The language of moral imperatives is out of place here. It's overwrought and it's counterproductive. If gene editing is such a good idea, it will sell itself. 
we don't need to give it an advertising slogan that it's new, it's improved, it's a moral imperative. The first Human Genome Project taught us how to read the genome, but we're still reading at about the level of a five-year-old child who has just learned phonetics and can sound out the words, but has no idea what they mean. If any of you underwent whole genome sequencing today, it would probably show that you have three million variants or little oddities in your genome, of which 10,000 would probably be in the protein coding exome, which has your genes. Right now, we know enough about 200 of those for it to warrant further medical scrutiny if you have those variants. That's all we know. But already, we're starting to write human genomes, and by that, I mean either editing naturally occurring genomes, such as the ones you have, or synthesizing whole new ones from scratch. Now, there's nothing wrong with learning to write and read at the same time. If you've ever learned a foreign language, that's how you do it. So that's not abnormal. But we need to have the humility to understand that we're very much in the position of a mechanically naive person who's trying to fix a broken car. You open the hood, and is that the bonnet? Is that what you, do you call it a bonnet? You open the bonnet. <laughs> and in Texas, we wear bonnets on our heads. Um, <laughs> the engine is there. You see a wire sticking out. And you don't know, is that wire supposed to be there, or should you pull it out and throw it away? You don't have enough knowledge to fix it. That's where we are right now with fixing broken genomes. I firmly believe that the power to write the genome ultimately will be as significant as the mastery of fire by our ancestors. Controlling fire let us stop being eaten by tigers in the night. It let us ex extract more nutrients from our food. It freed us from parasitical illness. It was a great thing. Point of information. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Sorry, point of information. Could I take it a little later, please? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, controlling fire was a game changer, but is there a moral imperative to use fire? Every enlightened modern culture carefully preserves a space for people who reject the moral imperative to use fire. We call that space a sushi bar. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to cook your fish, you don't have to. And that's how we should approach the ethics of gene manipulation. <laughs> People who think they have a moral imperative can be very dangerous. Ethical imperatives are unconditional. They're without limits and prerequisites. Bishop Diego de Landa thought he had a moral imperative when he burned the Mayan Codex in the town square of Mani in the Yucatan on July 12, 1562. The doctrine of manifest destiny was another moral imperative with a problematic side. That was the view which was fairly prevalent in 19th century America, that the United States had a geographically defined imperative to expand westward until we hit the Pacific coastline. Now, I'm all for owning California. It's a fantastic piece of real estate. But to get it, we did a few not very nice things to the previous owners. And that's just it. Once you posit a moral imperative to do something, you only have to do it. You don't have to do it right. And we desperately need to get gene manipulation right. Responsible stewardship of this technology is crucial to avoid backlash and to reap its ultimate benefits. The last thing I'll say is that moral imperatives oversimplify and deny our pluralism. Exactly which genes is it ethically necessary to change? You know we're never going to be able to agree on that. The New York Times did a survey of cosmetic surgeons in New York City to try to establish 
Which traits of beauty are universally desired? New Yorkers are the most ethnically and culturally diverse group of plastic surgery addicts in the world. <laughs> and it turned out some people want more fat put in and others want the fat taken out. There were only two traits we could agree are good. No one wants lines in the forehead and everyone wants a flat tummy. Is that what this debate is about? Bioethicists and moral philosophers sometimes cite our intractable lack of agreement as a reason why we need to have them tell us what to do. I say fire the ethicists. You are as wise about gene manipulation as they are. You can't agree, but why should you? You have different goals and different beliefs and different values. That's called moral pluralism. Humans do not have the limbing gene. Our capacity for moral pluralism is ultimately our most distinctive and treasured human genetic trait. Let's preserve it. That means no moral imperative against gene manipulation and no moral imperative for it. So please oppose this motion. Thank you.